So my country people there, now the actual indictment is for the Kansas City 3, where they will be charged with four counts them, and I will talk about those counts them in a minute. As now if you see, I'm for you, the important thing for known as liberty, the plaintiff, now the United States of American government, and now them three days, where we call them, say, the Kansas City 3, you get Claude Ngenevu Chi, you get Francis Chengi Sr., and you get Langmin Nestor. Now the defenders in this, for this case, where American government, it charged them. Make we go through the four counts and phone and make we now see what they actually accuse them of doing. So if we zoom in a little bit, make we now look at the counts and say, I'm say count number one, it talks in a conspiracy to provide material support or resources to a foreign uh, terrorist organization or to people in a foreign country that are committing terrorism. So this one are just conspiracy, we mean say, planning to carry out the act, you know, must succeed. If you just plan for carry out a criminal act, that is conspiracy and that itself is a crime. So it says 18 USC 2339 Alpha Alpha, it talks say that charge it carry a maximum 15 years imprisonment and also a maximum a quarter of a million dollars fine and a maximum three years supervised release. And this one a class C felony. Now we move on to count number two. They charge them with actually providing the material support or resources to people in a foreign country who are carrying out a terrorist act. So you see, and see, so they charge them for the conspiracy, the planning of it, and they also charge them because they know that they get the evidence, say they actually succeed for carry out the the support or providing support and uh, or resources to the people them in a foreign country where they commit a terrorist act. So they charge them with that USC with this one for United States Penal Code number eighteen USC two three three nine alpha. And two as an officium. So the, that one too, it carry another maximum 15 years imprisonment, another 250,000 US dollars fine, and another maximum three years supervised release after. So now that one, it carry a, that one, they call them saying a class C felony as well. Now, count number three. This one, they say receiving money from a ransom demand. So they get evidence. Say this. Three people in the Kansas City three, Langmin Nestor, them, Claude Chi and Francis Chengi, they don't actually receive money after some person don't be kidnapped and then they demand ransom. So now they charge them with that 18 USC 880 and 2, where it carry a maximum of three years imprisonment, another 250,000 US dollar fine, and a maximum of three years supervised release. And this one a class E felony. Now we we'll go on to count number four. For me, this one even be more serious because it carry a maximum of 20 years imprisonment half a million US dollars fine and another three years supervised release and this one a class C felony. This one count number four, that conspiracy to launder monetary instruments. So the United States government, now you did charge them with all of these counts and four counts them for American court, Nobi Cameroon court and this one, now the actual indictment is where I go read and phone. Now, which we will need for no say, this one I just come for read and phone and I just page one of 10 pages for this document where where it will be filed on the 18th of November 2022 and the document it will be sealed till the 28th of November 2022 when where the three people that will be actually be arrested Langmin Nestor, Claude Chi and Francis Chengi they will be arrested so for now we want to follow up the case now the case number that we will search them it will give you more information about the case so now for page 2 they talk about the common allegations the way the United States government it charged them the talk say, at all times relevant to this indictment, Claude Chi is a United States citizen residing in or around Lee Summit in Missouri. Cheng Yi is a U.S. citizen residing in or around St. Paul in Minnesota. And, and Lang Min Nestor, another U.S. citizen residing in or around Buffalo, New York. So now the three things that I don't state, I'm now the talk say, beginning at a date unknown, but no later than January the 1st, 2018, and continuing on to the present, the defendants supported and raised funds for separatist fighters in an ongoing Cameroonian rebellion. The defendants each held senior level positions within an organization that supported and directed the militant separatist group known as the Ambazuna Restoration Forces, the ARF, and other separatist fighters within Cameroon's Anglophone regions. The defendants solicited and raised funds for equipment, supplies, weapons, and explosive materials to be used in attacks against Cameroon government personnel, security forces, and property, along with other civilian believed to be enabling the government. These funds were raised through online chat applications and payment platforms 
from individuals located in the United States and abroad. The funds were then transferred from various financial and cryptocurrency accounts controlled by the defendants through intermediaries to the separatist fighters to support attacks in Cameroon. Paragraph 5, the talks say, in addition to the funds that were raised through voluntary donations, the defendants conspired with others to kidnap civilians in Cameroon and hold them for ransom. In some instances, United States citizens were extorted for ransom payments to secure the release of their kidnapped relatives in Cameroon. These ransom demands were couched as fines for violating rules imposed by the separatist groups and contributions to the separatist cause. So they continue for Toxie. In at least one instance, the defendants coordinated and personally received the ransom payment. When I say I'm not, they personally received the ransom payment from a US-based victim and informed the kidnappers located in Cameroon when the ransom payment was received. The ransom payments were, were subsequently transferred to the separatist fighters in funding their operations. So when I say I'm saying this, so the the U.S. government it actually get evidence say they don't actually kidnap person where a family member didn't for America and the family member for America he paid ransoms to Claude Chi Langmin Nestor and Francis Chenyi and then they transferred the information and the money to the amber terrorists on the ground and they released their family members them so they get the evidence and this one it only work if. The victims, they complain. So the victims, they don't come forward. They provide evidence. They don't transfer money to this so-and-so person for the purpose of releasing my family member. They don't show them the evidence. Say they so their communication with Langmin Nest or Claude Chi them. Their communication negotiation for the release of their family members them. They, now concrete evidence where they go fry them now in some Munyanga oil. They go fry them. Now why the way they be indicted, they be arrested and they be held in prison while awaiting trial they don't be held now for two years in prison no trial because say, the evidence gathering phase and all of that and is still going on and it be so crucial because of the charges now why do they no one for leave them so that they go make sure say they no go out and may they no run or may they no continue for the coming more crimes them it be very difficult for america for a whole person for up to two years on just charges without trial but their own, because now terrorism-related cases, the way it involves violence, kidnapping for ransoms, now why that way the United States government, it denied for give them bail, it denied for give them house arrest, it denied for let them free until after the trial, and then they, they lock them up. Now we therefore for page 3, we get paragraph 6, 7, and 8. Make we read and for now. So page 3, it talks, say, the manner and means of the conspiracy. Now remember, I say conspiracy, it just means planning to carry out the act. You know, must succeed. If you just plan for commit something within a crime, that itself is a crime. So, the conspiracy itself, the talk say, beginning on a date unknown but no later than the 1st of January 2018 and continuing on to the present date, the defendants funded and directed separatist fighters operating in and around Ngoketunja Division in Cameroon. They called it Ngoketunja County. So, Francis Chenyi acted as the county chair for Ngoketunja County Langmin Nestor acted as the chairman of the Gokatunja Security Council and the defense spokesperson for the Ambazuna National Security Council, the ANSC, and the chairman of the Balikumbad Local Government Area, LGA, or Security Council. So now the positions in that way, they behold them. How now things the American government know all of this? Because they get their communication. <laughs> we get everything where they talk inside their WhatsApp groups and everything. The United States government get their communication. So... They continue for talks. Eh? So, Claude Chi acted as the treasurer of the Nkoketunja Security Council and as the chair of the NDOP LGA Security Council. Now, paragraph 7 talks, eh? beginning at a date unknown, but no later than January the 1st, 2018, and continuing on to the present, the defendants raised over 350,000 US dollars in donations, primarily from donors in the United States and Europe. These funds were used to support the operations of the ARF and other separatist fighters operating in and around Ngoketunja Division. So, paragraph 8 talks say, The defendants authored a document titled 2020 End of Year Statement in Ngoketunja County. This document, now he nailed them because the United States government, it get this document, it get their contributions them and which way they run the do them. And I go read them for now. 
Now, based on that document, way they use information from that document for charge them. Now, paragraph eight talks that the defendants authored this document titled "2020 End of Year Statement," which documented their organization's accomplishments, the income and expenses. According to these records, the defendants raised eighty-eight thousand four hundred fifty-five U.S. dollars in 2020. Itemized expenses included at least ten entries related to IEDs and 10 entries related to firearms and ammunition. Other expenditures included funds related to specific separatist operations, including the kidnapping of traditional ruler named Sem Mbinglo II, holder of the title of Fon, or leader of the Nsor people, and Christian Cardinal Tumi on November the 5th, 2020. Now, I hope so when I get the point, when I get the picture now, it don't become clear. The fun of saw a kidnapping and Cardinal Tumi a kidnapping. Now, one of the biggest reasons why Claude Chi, Langmin Nestor, and Francis Chengi did it for prison today. And now, why the way I don't the hammer on this? The people then from saw where they talk today, so no, make we forgive and forget, let bygones be bygones. No, because these things will repeat itself if we decide for forgive and forget. We fit forgive for the spirit of you know, reconciliation, but we should never forget. And now why do we need for build monuments? We need for write history books. We need for build museums for make sure so make we know, forget the history and make we know, repeat them in the future. So the forum saw a kidnapping and Christian Cardinal Tumi, their kidnapping on November the 5th, 2020. It'd be very important for we to remember because it changed the tide. For the first time, the United States of America, it charged ambassador terrorists for committing or sponsoring acts of terror inside Cameroon because of the kidnapping of these two people then. Now he take them down. And at that time where they be doing, they be there for Facebook, they be glad, they be celebrate. So that one my contributor now page number three for this document. So page four of the document is start with the uh, items and where the defendants them, the three people them, the Lang Minister them from Ngoketunja County, when not themselves they claimed a touting, saying that their achievements them during 2020, where they toxic they don't do them for the so-called Coquitunja County, and they name a few of them for you, they toxic say, A, the successful disruption of the La Republic du Cameroon celebration of their national days, namely 11th of February and 20th of May, targeting civilians. B, disruption of planned meetings by La Republic du Cameroon regime for school resumption in our territory, targeting civilians. School resumption, school picking them, they stop schools, they made no hold. C, one month lockdown for the territory in solidarity with our traders, targeting civilians. Lockdown in the affair Cameroon military. Now they say D, they say complete push of frogs. They say in bracket Cameroon soldiers, no, frogs just mean francophones them out of our communities. Targeting civilians them. So when I would say and say all the activities the way they are they, they write down for their reports for the so-called Coquetunja report for 2020, where they, 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 they brag, they're proud, say they don't achieve them. All of them they target civilians them. Now they say E multiple arrest and prosecution of enablers targeting civilians. And F the talk say the successful intervening and arresting of chief enabler, the foreign so. Cardinal Tumi and the delegation on the campaign trip to Bui, amongst others. So, Unafisi and see this, so all of these things, and way the Langmin nest of them for their document, where they write them, where they're proud, they're brags and the achievements, and now the things in the, now the things in the, this way, the United States government, they use them for indict them, where they go go for prison for. So, paragraph nine, it go on for talk say, on November the 5th, 2020, Langmi Nestor issued a voice message to separatist fighters in Cameroon stating that he had learned that political enablers would be traveling through Ngoketunja County and that any convoy should be put down. On or about November the 9th, 2020, Langmi Nestor again described on a Facebook Live video how he learned of the travel plans of the Fon of so Sem Mbinglo II and Cardinal, Cardinal Christian Tumi and he coordinated their kidnapping by the Ngoketunja County ARF on November the 5th, 2020. When I see how stupid this people be, they plan for kidnap people them. And then they go for Facebook, go they brag about them. <laughs> Hi, this people the door. Now, 
Now, paragraph 10, for here, it talks about it. On June the 2nd, 2020, Claude Chi sent a message to Francis Chengi requesting funds for an unindicted conspirator known as Captain Fire, later known as General Fire. <laughs> so, Captain Fire, or at that time, it being a Captain Fire, later they start calling her General Fire because they don't give Galong. <laughs> so now, the general fire it didn't have Kokatunja. So now Claude Chi it asked Francis Cheng, he said, make it give money, may they buy uh, material them for an attack against various government and civilian buildings in Dub Cameroon. Now the targets where they be one for attack them include one, the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, Minipat, and then you get in Dub Community Hall, you get a Royal Garden. You get the special branch police station. You get the legal department. You get the grandstand, the new and the old one. And you got the new divisional officer. You see, I say all their targets, they are targeting civilians. And why that way they charge them with conspiracy to, provi to provide material support to aid acts of terror in a foreign country. Because terrorism is when you use violence against civilians to achieve a political aim. You see, I say all their targets them, not civilians them. And I know say someone when I think say they so police not military. No. Police are civilians. Military not the army, the air force, the navy. Not military that. Gendarmes not paramilitary. Yes, if you if you consider the military. But the police are civilian. In every country in the world, police are civilian. Even police, the way they carry guns, they are civilians. If we be know, make we know today. So all their targets, as an official, now civilian targets them. So now why do they charge them of committing or sponsoring terrorism in a foreign country? So the indictment for page 4, it continued by saying, the cost estimated for the materials was 574,000 francs CFA. And then Kokachunja County expense report included a 9 June 2020 entry for this expense titled Ndop LGA Mission Logistics for 575,000 francs CFA. On June the 21st, 2020, Captain Fire sent Claude Chi five photos of buildings in early stages of fire, stating that the new divisional officer or the new deal office and the last office down. And then Claude Chi responded, Confirm our able captain. <laughs> so, why una, how now things it is so the American government know exactly which way Captain Fire sent them for Claude Chi and exactly which way Claude Chi a respond back to Captain Fire say, Confirm our able captain. How the American government know say, uh, Captain Fire be sent uh, Claude Chi exactly five pictures. Now, because they get access to this information, they have the pictures, the videos, all their conversations, the people, the way they will donate their money. The American government has all of this information. Many more people will go down. Now, why that way the investigation, it takes so long. Now, why that way the American government, it don't hold them for more than two years without trial because the investigation is going on. Many more people will go down. When I go here, where? When I go see, I'm not. So, for continuing for page five, we get now paragraph 11, a talks say, on July the 2nd, 2020, Langmin Nestor submitted a request to, Clo uh, to Francis Chengi for 3 million francs to purchase two firearms for the vampires of Gokatunja County. In Gokatunja County rec records prepared by the defendants included a payment on July the 11th, 2020 for 3 million francs for two firearms for Captain Fire. <laughs> Paragraph 12, it talks say, on December the 26th, 2020, now it don't become now General Fire sent a message requesting that um, that Francis Chengi appoint him as the head of the vampires and confirm his continuing loyalty to the Ngoketunja Defense Council. Francis Chengi confirmed that he would appoint General Fire as the leader of the vampires. So when I see how the terrorism on the ground, that they work with the Shido Weblas in the diaspora, 
for give themselves titles so that they could give them loyalty. So for this small three million, where they send them for go buy two AK for the seven, or the because they uh, the guy on the ground don't swear loyalty to Francis Chengi and and Sako Ekomei group, they go make he uh, general. When I see how the pro or uh, what do they call and say uh, quid pro quo uh, relationship and arrangement, it happened right. So now we we'll continue paragraph 13 talks say, on December the 2nd, 2020. Francis Chengi sent Claude Chi a video recording a video recording of a list of materials for constructing IEDs and associated costs that include A, B, C, D, and all of these ones. Um, so they want to buy three buckets of gunpowder, six batteries, remote controls, six starters, cutting blades, four buckets of pepper and and zinc wait wait the one by pepper for put her inside the ied <laughs> oh, i swear to god they didn't buy na pepper no be paper they say pepper they want buy na na pepper for put her inside the ied oi 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 see primitive explosives and primitive amber shit no way blast them now na weapons they just say now one use of a difficult no military pepper okay now now, if you see, this, so for continue for page five, the talk say the total estimate for the materials was 306,000 francs CFA. Francis Chengi asked Claude Chi whether they could sponsor the IED materials and towards December the sixth election. So they will want to target the election for 2020. So referring to the December 6, 2020 regional elections held in Cameroon. On December the 3rd, 2020, Francis Chengi and Claude Chi. Oh, Francis Chengi sent Claude Chi a receipt confirming the transfer of 310,000 francs CFA. This expense was recorded by Chi and Chengi on Gokatunja County accounting documents. So everything where they will do, which is good, they will keep records, which is nice because now the United States government has access to those records <laughs> and they will prosecute them based on those records. They will go for prison for a very long time, I contribute them. When I don't see the charges them, the maximum prison a sentence where they face them one are 20 years two of them are 15 15 years even if they find them guilty on just one count and they give them the maximum sentence now 15 years in prison and i go can explain for now a little bit later exactly which way it mean for go for prison for that length of time even now for two years the cost the toll where it could be placed on you as an individual and then your family and the rest. We can't talk about that uh, subsequently, my contributor. So the indictment, it continues for page 5, the toxic. The toxic on December the 16, 2020, Francis Cheng created a messaging group he called the Bamessing Action Team with Claude Chi and others, included co-conspirator located in Cameroon, referred to as General Sagon or Sagon. So now, General Sagon, now the same shit, no wife last week, we don't already kill him. Okay? So now, the conspirators exchanged messages where they advocated for a strategy of employing IEDs against Cameroonian forces. The conspirators encouraged General Sagon to make a video of an IED attack. So, we now see how they risk this in their lives. In order for them to raise money for America, they want to show stupid Facebook videos. Eh? For ginger, the population say they so they are doing something on the ground. And also for show say the money where they donate them to be used on the ground. Okay? Now, in order for them to get those videos, them, they need to tell this beginner like Jenna Sagon, say, maybe they go make stupid videos. Eh? And now, if the videos, they know they, people, they know go donate money. <laughs> <laughs> they could talk, say, place the code, place don't go. What's our money? They go so now they actually actively require semi general Sagot in make videos of an IED attack so that they go use them for Facebook. And now, now see the importance of blacklegs because we blacklegs them, we don't come inside the picture now. We don't make them be damn near impossible for Amber them for the broadcast those kind of stupid videos them on Facebook because we exploit them. For way, way, Cameroon military and Cameroon authorities, they know they don't ever they exploit them. We they take those videos and now analyze them, release important information from those videos and where it lead directly to the concomization of the terrorists where they carry out those acts. For example, we they know their, their, them, identify their names, their faces, their family members, them, and give vital information where it would directly link to consequences on them. Now, one of the reasons that way many of the terrorists now they fear for make videos and for put them for Facebook. 
Even though the ones in for diaspora, they beg them all the time, say, make videos and send them for we so that we put them for Facebook. But the ones in for Facebook, they fear for make such videos and because we the black legs and we use them against them, we make them impossible for them for make those videos and for continue for the spread those kind of propaganda. So on page seven, my country people then paragraph number eighteen, we have see for here. The indictment talks say on March the 9th, two thousand and twenty one. Langmin Nestor sent a recorded voice message to, uh, to Chi, Claude Chi, advising that the governor of Cameroon's Northwest region was headed to Nkoketunja County. Langmin Nestor encouraged all fighters to, um, to ensure that the governor was picked up and does not leave the territory. An unindicted co-conspirator forwarded Langmin's voice message to the Bami Singh Action Team Group and stated that 2 million francs CFA for any unit that will deliver the governor. <laughs> so now see how did they plan for kidnap the governor of Northwest or for kill him for murder he civilian or nobody not military target that. So now they go on now for talk about the count them. So, so they say count one, the conspiracy to prove material support or resources to a terrorist organization in a foreign country. That's the full title of the count. So the talk say these people, the way they don't indict them, Claude Chi, Francis Chengi, and La Nestor Langmi, the three of them, whether the defendants and other persons known and unknown to the grand jury, did knowingly and we did knowingly and willfully combine, conspire, confederate, and agree with each other to provide and attempt to provide material support and resources as defined in Title 18. United States Code Section 2339 Alpha B, including currency and monetary instruments, collectively, money, property, weapons, and services knowingly and intended, intending that such money, property, and weapons and services were to be used in preparation for and in carrying out violations of Title 18 USC Section 956 Alpha, conspiracy to kill, kidnap, and maim persons in a foreign country. So now they count that way they talk him and then they continue now for the next page they talk say count two. They say Claude Chi and Francis Chengi they did knowingly and unknowingly provide an attempt to provide material support and resources with 310,000 francs CFA knowing and intending that the material support and resources were to be used in preparation for and in carrying out a violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 2332 Alpha in brackets B, conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction outside of the United States. So Nassina they count in that and then they go on for uh, explain count three, receiving money from a ransom demand. The defendants then with the list and for your Claude Chi. Francis Chengi and La, 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 Nestor Langmi pro, uh, received, possessed, and concealed 1,500 US dollars that was obtained from the transmission in interstate and foreign commerce for a communication that contained a demand for ransom for the release of kidnapped persons in violation of US Title 18, 875 Alpha, knowingly knowing the same to have been unlawfully obtained in violation of Title 18 U.S.C. Section 880 and 2. So they go on for read count 4, where they indict them conspiracy to launder monetary instruments, where the talk said Claude Chi, Langmin Nestor, and Francis Chengi, they did unlawfully and knowingly conspire and agree to transmit and transfer monetary instruments and fund from a place in the United States to a place outside of the United States uh, within Cameroon with the intent to promote and carry on of or carrying on of specified unlawful activities, uh, you know, conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction outside of the United States in violation of United States laws. So this one now a true bill, it be signed by the grand jury on the 18th of November 2022. And it will be sealed and it will be unsealed after they will be arrested on the 28th of November 2022. 
where it don't be exactly two years ago. So my contribute to them. Make una understand say there are three Ambazonia terrorists in the United States of America where they're for prison right now as a result of their terrorist attack on the phone of Saw and Cardinal Tumi on the 5th of November 2020. So if this one it be being a Cameroon where they arrest them and they incarcerate them awaiting trial for more than two years, many of them have come out on the streets with the stupidity and the usual nonsense, claiming whoa kangaroo, whoa banana republic and all of that nonsense. But now we're in the United States of America waiting on a good talk. So in the past few weeks, we not only hear these fools them where they come out for so-called ABC, Amber Alphabet Facebook page where they talk, they even go bring some American man, Mexican talk, they talk about the Kansas City 3. The whole point of argument, I say, say they get a differential treatment between black African people them and the other people the way they defied wars them for Israel, Palestine and other countries them. But you know, they deny the fact say these three, Langmin Nestor, Claude Chi and Francis Chengi, they commit crimes. Is it a crime as a US citizen that he was originally born in another country trying to help your people under oppression to defend themselves by any means either have true financial donation is that a crime well i just cited to you uh, the law that is on the books okay and uh it's called the neutrality act the yeah. purpose of the law was or is to prevent U.S. citizens from getting embroiled in foreign wars in which the United States has not declared war. So that the law is designed to prevent U.S. citizens embroiling the United States into wars where the United States government has not declared a war. It's called the Neutrality Act. And we are seeing the law being applied and uh, individuals like the Kansas City Three, Francis Cheney, Claude Chi, and Lam Nesto uh, Langham being prosecuted. And again, you, and the federal uh, uh, criminal law is being used against them. Uh, and they have added some additional elements uh, that is, uh, the individuals have conspired, uh, that is, reached an agreement between each other uh, to uh, commit these crimes. But the point that I am making is that other Americans are doing this, the exact same thing with respect to wars in Israel and also wars in the Ukraine and they are not being prosecuted which begs the question why so I go hello this part answer your question they did prosecute them for crimes including sponsoring terrorism and receiving ransom money after they don't kidnap people them on the ground inside cameroon they receive money from their victims them in the united states of america that is why they are being prosecuted besides america they support the ukrainians america they support israel america they support ambassador terrorists the answer is no so this one not just a stupid question whether they ask you, I need to give a stupid answer. Maybe that part, you need to go take a medication, or maybe the smoke some kind bang away, it don't expire. They need to prosecute them for things where they don't do them. They prosecute them for things where they absolutely do them, especially kidnapping for ransom and sponsoring terrorism 
in a foreign country. Terrorism, now when you use violence against civilians, the Ukrainians, they need to target civilians for Russia. And as Nassian from the indictment, they, they, they take the time for list the specific dates the times, the individuals, what did they do, how they plan the conspiracy, how they carry out the crimes, them, all of those things, them, it be specific. So there is no way where these three individuals, them, they will get, they will get away with this crime. There is no way. These people that they face decades in prison. Meguna understands that just for these two years where they don't be locked up awaiting trial, they don't already lose a lot of money. Meg would take just one of them, Francis Chengi. He'd be being a, a prison uh, a security guard or whatever they call him in the United States of America. Even a people that they work in the Department of Corrections for prisons. His salary, the average salary for people then for America where they work that kind of job. Now about 50 something between 50 and 60,000 US dollars. Make we even take the lower end. Say so they earn about 50,000 US dollars a year for that job. For the past two years, where he be locked up in prison, it means that now 100,000 US dollars that way, he don't lose his some. Just lost revenue. That 100,000 US dollars, it be equivalent to over 60 million francs CFA where he and his family don't lose his arm for the past two years alone. And it he faced how many decades? It he faced more than 20 years in prison. And all the three of them, they he faced more than 20 years in prison. When were they could be found guilty? Because I guarantee when I say they could be found guilty and they could go for prison for lengthy periods of time. Mangang, Tamufos St. Michael them, uh, Alambi Waters and all of those ones, them, the other uh, 10, where they will be arrested, charged with lesser crimes, them, many of them plead guilty. Many of them, they don't already find them guilty. So all of them, they're there for prison as I speak. The lowest one, they go for prison for a minimum of three years. And they don't face the kind of charges the way these three, they charge, uh, uh, these three, they face them. These three, the Kansas City three, they charged them now with terrorism related charges. Now, why that way they be arrested and locked up, even where they never find them guilty? Why way Mangang and the other 10, they will go through their judicial process, they will be allowed to go home and continue to live their normal lives until they will be found guilty, and then they tell them a date for report for go for prison because their charges it will be related to terrorism. But these three, these three, Claude Chi, Langmi Nesto, and Francis Chengi, their crimes will be related with terrorism. Now, why that way they don't deny them bail for more than two years? The day for prison are waiting trial. So make we assume if you assume, say, individually, they will earn about 50,000 US dollars, as I don't already explain for now. They don't already individually the cost on their lives. Forget about the freedoms and the and the things and where they will enjoy and where they don't enjoy them anymore. Just financial cost where it be quantifiable. Individually, they don't already individually, they don't already lose more than 60 million francs each. Where it means say now expenditures that way, their families they go get them where they need to make money. It means say they will still continue, they will still need for continue for the pay mortgage, for pay car loans, for pay other loans, credit cards. They are picking, they still need to go for school. Insurance still need to get paid, but they don't get revenue. They don't get access to money where they come in. So their whole family, their life, their lifestyle, it will change. So if they get big house now, they need to sell them, move into smaller house. Maybe they need to sell the motor. The small assistance where they will send up for Cameroon for help family, especially with the cost of living crisis and all of those things, then, that money, it will reduce or it will stop altogether. So now the reverberating effect this way, it will affect their whole families then. Their whole life will be upended, it be turned upside down. I also want to caution the recent pr pr uh, prosecution of some of our comrades in the US 
an action premeditated by the U.S. government against Amazonia. The law will follow its course. We have no problem with that. Instead of strict demonstrations on this matter in D.C., we should rather mobilize for a robust defense in court to vindicate our comrades. I urge Amazonians to contribute to our legal defense fund and do so now and accompany our comrades to court, whether in Maryland, in Kansas or Minnesota. It is never a crime to provide defense to somebody in court. Another advantage where we need for no, like Sako Ekome, it come on for talk and say with Now the Amber terrorists, the way they will donate money for America and everywhere else, for buy weapons then, for radicalize people then for TV and, and, and for radio and for Facebook, for radicalize this between them, send them weapons and send them they can't attack we. That money needs to come down anymore. Now all the money, the small pocket change where they get them now in donations for abroad, they will be spent in court fees, legal charges, legal fees. Now, which is that way, all the small donations where they donate them are brought now. It will go now now for Ayabacho legal fees for Norway or the Kansas City three, their legal fees, Mangang, their legal fees, and all the other expenses the way they get them. They get additional expenses that now they don't get anything to do with whatever nonsense that they happen inside Cameroon, which is fantastic. Where it means that we don't divert their attention. They focus now on things the way they don't be relevant. They focus now on court fees, legal charges, and all of those things them, rather than radicalizing, picking them on the ground and causing havoc in Cameroon. And now why that one, I don't say and say this, so we don't make so much gain on the ground. We compromise the shit, no why blast them. They don't feel recruit one gullible picking, make it carry guns go for bush. Their social media activities, them, it don't reduce. Paul Nilong, and they still make noise anymore. Sperm chop, nan chop, they Eric Tato them, the Mark Barretta them. All of these names, the way they make noise back in the days, them, the tapang ivo them, the kuku their beans them, all of those would not silence them. And now, now we take control on social media. So they get a zero capability for radicalized Anglophone people. They now, meanwhile, we now we don't take over with the communication on the ground and the small money where they raise them now on social media, they spend them for pay court fees, legal charges, and all of those things them. For, for their legal problems then in the United States, in Norway, in Europe, and everywhere else, none of that money it come on the ground for can radicalize the picking them on the ground anymore. And what will go happen as a result of that nasivity? The terrorism on the ground now, they become more and more reliant on kidnapping for ransom for survive. And the more they kidnap the Anglophone civilian population, for example, yellow taxi change, burning taxis, kidnapping for ransoms, all of those things that happen, it turned the population against the terrorists and the population that they work with the Cameroon military now for compromise the terrorists so, so that they go get their peace and tranquility back. So now the added advantage that either way, anything with the amber terrorists they do, it just backfire on them and it being an advantage for we the black legs, my country people then. Today, na number 28 day for November 2024, where it make them exactly two years since where the Kansas City 3, they will be arrested on charges where it be related to sponsoring terrorism in a foreign country and money laundry and accepting ransom demands after they kidnap people then on the ground inside Cameroon. So the three defendants them, na Langmi Nestor, Claude Chi and Francis Chengi. The people the way they will say they go radicalize where Anglophone use them, may they carry chakab and cry right guns them, they die die for bush inside Cameroon. Today now them they suffer for America where they be now now prisoners, they enjoy the fruits of their labor. My country people then. Yeah, okay. Hard for fight, but weapon, no, they're not bullet. They don't take on a video, they yeah. chop dough. They don't take on a video, they chop money. Yes. One, one they do. One they do. One all thing. Oh, they no. will need. We will lack guns. No, See two man to use them. They had them will fight. So when I stay posted, we will keep when informed with this particular case for the Kansas City Three. When where they will get their trial and eventual incarceration, we will keep broadcasting the information for Unama country people. Then stay tuned.
fighting. If we, if we lost this war, God forbid. I know, I'm not going to even blame the Republic again. Look at their own activists. Look at this criminal, where they call it, say, uh, Conrad Titus. In fact, that guy, he don't fight war for the Republic more than the Republic of Cameroon soldiers. Today, as they never go kill civilians, Conrad Titus don't, he don't post a video of UN a person where they talk about how we, uh, they don't see, say, uh, Ambazonia and uh, La Republic of Cameroon. They get everything in common where they don't feel separate. Now the video where they circulate on social media. I mean, every day he's trying to do something for similar Republic defeat us. It be focused. It be so focused to the point where you know the least one day we never try to put something out there to derail our people, to confuse our people for your own interest. That is a contractor because even corner titles. They recall him one of my country people, that loser, that criminal. If he no say La Republic of Cameroon be fine. If we leave UK where they, they go and live now for La Republic. I want to send out this audio so that me, people where they follow him, me they know how hypocritical this guy is. Because if La Republic of Cameroon will be good, this loser, if we come out from UK, go back go and live for Yaoundé in that mosquito, in that city where you not get light. In that city, we not get good roads. In that city, we not get all these things. Instead of our activists to focus on people like that, to destroy him once and for all, no, our activists, they are against themselves. They be so righteous against themselves. We get a loser when an Amazonia, if he uses his talent to destroy Amazonia, yet we are not paying attention. I think say if Repo- that guy is a contractor, color titles, on a serious note, what we don't work for La Republic, it passed even Brigadier General Car or Don Tom Voler. On a serious note, because the guy did write every negative little thing we say. It even instruct La Republic to Cameroon terrorists to they don't kill Amazonia uh, fighters. For example, General Trouble out of negligence in Gokutunja was killed a few days back. That one out of negligence. It's not because La Republic to Cameroon strong. In course of killing General Trouble, La Republic of Cameroon terrorists, a key one mama, where we sell uh, well a cocoa or granite for corner Road. They kill one Christmas. Corner Tetris don't put them on, on social media. He put a picture for General Trouble. Something where vex my heart past every other thing. We get our own activists. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the day on their four of them. They prove how righteous they be. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Lesson number one, my Pontypo, Dr. Betty. Listen, whether or not you accept my Pontypo is a force to reckon with. Me and you agree. He's an enemy that is strong. So, Amazonians will thank my country people for this wonderful job. Now, we'll go ahead. Thank you.